What's up, Weirdo? She Tree Surgeon here with Candy Bay in the garage. She's back, baby. I brought friends. <laughs> and she brought friends. And her friend brought a motorcycle. So say hello to Angela Hellcat. Say hello to maybe not the worst motorcycle that's ever been on this list. Is it got a name? No, I didn't get to ride it. Let's call it. Box for right now. This is a bike that was gifted to another friend, which got gifted to her, which now needs some love, and we're gonna try to make it love her back. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time making really rough things try to love me back. So, luckily for you guys, I have a ton of experience with this. Let's get started. One of my favorite things is uh, when someone doesn't get a package and someone else does. Now, normally, I like to get all the packages, but now uh, Angela has nothing. And Cammy gets a package. I got something. <laughs> In the P.O. box. Look, it's from Rich. Look how many Y's. That's our P.O. box. You can send to that. So, move your hand. Yeah, that's okay to show. I covered the wrong one. <laughs> We've been getting some weird stuff for Cammy in the P.O. box. We can't even show all of it on YouTube, so uh, I don't know what this I one's gonna be. I'm a freak bitch if we show them that. <laughs> I know, I knew it. All right, let's like, see. I wonder what it is. I was like, it's probably a shirt. I hope it says I'm aim to perplex on it. <laughs> the Conk Republic, baby. I wonder if he's from Key West. Is that where the address maybe. says? Oh, maybe he knows that you go like that. You love to go to the Keys. Don't put that on. It's so hot out here. <laughs> exactly what he wanted me to do with it. Oh yeah, dude. See what the girls look Let me tell you what, man. Uh, give us the side profile. In a white shirt. Uh, no, not that weird. I can think of some things I'd like to do a white shirt. Maybe a different uh, video. Not <laughs> All right. Commence to jiggling. Here we go. <laughs> Everything about this bike is an absolute unknown. So we've got a battery. Does it have a dipstick or a side glass? And also, we need to take a look at it and see if that oil looks like it has water in it, if it's milky. No. So it would be milky if it had water in it? Milky. It looks like somebody changed the oil and then never ran the bike. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, no, no, no that's, good. that's not a bad thing. That means it's got new oil in it. So that's one less thing that we have to put in it. <laughs> There you go. Now you're just mashing it, okay? So now we have a scissor jack. What? <laughs> Not a scissoring jack. Cammy. And if I was a dick, I'd let you do it with your hand. Oh, are you? Okay. Now, it isn't the tempting. Very, very tempting. You, you acted right for a second. I'd be acting like Sim Tree Surgeon on camera. But once the camera turns off, once the camera turns off, I'm like, Cammy, get that damn battery. Jeez. First of all, no. First of all, I would literally. <laughs> Don't. Oh yeah, go ahead. Do not. Sir. Yeah, talk, not. talk dirty to me. Vote in the comments now. Would you let Cammy after you if she had those needle nose pliers in her hand? Make a decision and choose wisely, boys. Ah! Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that jumpy? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good sign. Have you ever heard this motorcycle? Have you ever heard this motorcycle run, Angela, while it's, while it's been in your possession? Yeah. You practice standing like that in the mirror, or what? <laughs> You're trying to go fast? Me too, baby. Well, the garage has gotten significantly less hot. Well, it's still pretty hot in here, just uh, significantly less girls in here. You can catch the rest of that video on the Cami Bay channel, which should be coming up sometime after this video. In fact, we got a lot of cool stuff for you today. We've got Chaylisi's vid or her live stream, not sure which one she's doing yet. And you've also got Odin releasing one of their very best videos yet. So uh, Odin MFG, you guys know who they are. And we've got really big stuff coming up with Odin right now, and I'm super excited about how their YouTube channel is going. Just stay tuned and make sure you go check them out and subscribe to them. They'll be coming up as a premiere after this one. It's gonna be righteous. It was pouring outside, so I thought this is a perfect time to get some work done on the Magna, uh, fix those brakes up so I can go faster than I should. The brakes don't work now, but even when they are fixed, they're still 40-year-old uh, brakes. So I don't know how good they really are. But it officially stopped raining. So I'm going to take this rare opportunity of it not raining and it not being 1000 degrees outside to ride. You got to catch as catch can when it comes to riding in Florida and I'm definitely going to take advantage of it right now. Once again, I have to choose between my two little piglets here. The RT1150 Police, the Bavarian Wild Boar, and of course the KZ1000, the Power Pig. Got to spend some time with these bikes, man. We've only got a little bit left. This video is coming out on Sunday and so five days, Friday Day, July 28th these bikes are getting given away and this video is actually coming out on my birthday uh, I just thought about that right now but five days after that one of these bikes is no longer my bike and I think we're gonna hop on the power pig because right now the power pig is I think the favorite that someone's gonna pick it's not getting all the votes but right now 
more people are saying they want the power pick than any other of the motorcycles even the harley davidson well there's actually two harley davidson's not just one but oh definitely not thinking about harley davidson's right now damn this thing rips dude uh, when i say the power pig i mean it baby this is a hundred plus well maybe about a hundred horsepower i don't know about a hundred plus horsepower but definitely a hundred horsepower machine right here i keep saying that i'm surprised that i see more comments of people saying they'd pick the power pig from this raffle than any of the other motorcycles but it's also my favorite so i don't think it's <laughs> i really don't think it's that weird i guess it kind of strikes me as weird because technically even though i've done like definitely done the most work to the power pig had the carbs completely off the carbs are completely rebuilt new tires completely rebuild the brakes we really did a lot of work to this bike to make it nice even though we did all that it is still like technically the worst bike out of all of them if you don't count the iron head anyway and i understand why people would want it anyway i mean i understand why people would want the iron head anyway too even though it doesn't run because if you've already got a touring bike you might want a project sports that you can make a chopper out of or a flat track or whatever and this thing i mean it is ready to go exactly as it sits right now and I'll tell you, it does rip. It actually handles and stops really well too. The thing handles like a freaking dream. I'm gonna be kind of careful right now because of these wet streets, but it does, it handles really well even with my fat ass on it and i did not rebuild the suspension because it was not leaking you know whatever's in those forks should probably do with a little changing if you do end up picking this bike if you win this bike definitely isn't perfect but man it is a blast and it's a kz 1000 dude kz 1000 crazy that they made this a police bike when uh it spent most of its life before it became a police bike evading the police <laughs> Well, I guess it was uh, early on in the movies. It was an early police motorcycle. This is, of course, what Goose rode in Mad Max. Now, if I end up keeping this bike, I'd probably leave it just like this, and I won't do anything to it. But if there was one thing I was going to do to this motorcycle and change it from the way it looks right now, which a lot of people would keep it because it's the chips bike. You know, a lot of people grew up on chips, and they want to keep it just like that. And there's some guys that want to do choppers. But my man Busted Nux had the right idea. He says, dude, if you do anything to it, you got to make it look just like the Interceptor for Mad Max. Now that would be a cool custom build. And technically, you're still keeping it a cop bike. These KZ1000 motors, they could take a round from a 45 and keep on ticking, baby. They're damn near indestructible. As evidence, the fact that this motorcycle sat for 19 years, got it for a song, I mean, like a thousand bucks. And yeah, you know, I, I ended up dumping about 1,500, almost $2,000 into it. But afterwards, dude, this bike runs flawlessly. Not one hiccup, not one sputter. Yeah, cosmetically, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but you guys know me, I kind of like them that way. Just less stuff to cry about if you end up dumping it all over the road. And it's yet another cop bike going down its villain arc on a mission from God, baby. This bike is the embodiment of the cruiser from the Blues Brothers, all right? Ugly as sin, but with a big old honking motor in it. <laughs> it gets the job done. Well, let's go back and take a turn on the BMW R1150RT, which arguably, very arguably, is definitely the best bike out of all the four you could choose from out of the KZ1000, the NYPD Harley-Davidson Street Glide, and the Ironhead Sportster. Their 1150 is hands down like the best. But ironically, it's gotten the least number of votes, at least what I saw in the comments, of people who say that's the one they'd take if they won the raffle. All right, let's put the hood rocket away and take a spin on something just a little more more refined. Besides some of the new bikes that we've given away for Forgotten Angels, this is definitely the nicest motorcycle we've ever given away that uh, wasn't a brand new bike. It is so incredibly ironic to say that like, there it goes, dude, thing's about to pull the front wheel off the ground. It's so ironic that an opposed twin in this BMW is smoother and faster than an inline four cylinder. But here we are, This the, the advancements on this bike. And gosh, I think that they made, this is a 2007 and they made the KZ1000P all the way to 2005, only two years before this bike. And they still had this bike was the same in 2005. Those bikes existed at the same time. And this one is just so much more advanced. Like I said, it is a far and above the best motorcycle 
out of all four. That doesn't mean somebody wants it just because it's the best. Yeah, we go through that all the time with guys who can't understand why people ride Harley Davidsons. They go, well, well, well they're so old and ancient technology and blah, 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 blah. And people like to say maintenance too. They go, the maintenance is so high. But just like this BMW, Harley Davidsons and, and this Beamer are like almost maintenance free compared to a lot of chain drive Japanese motorcycles that require valve adjustments. Actually, I don't know if this thing requires valve adjustments, but if it does, they are really easy to get to. It's just wild how good this bike is. And for good reason, the 1150, which I think the 1150 was the very first iteration of the engine after the old airheads, after the R100s. Now the R100RTs, the GS R100s and all those bikes, they're awesome bikes, but they're pretty ancient technology. And uh, when BMW came out with this motorcycle, they just threw the book at it, man. This thing got everything and it shows. They kept this model around just like this for a really, really long time because it was just so good, dude. All those memes about GS owners and how they think their bikes are like the best bikes in the world, that all came about from this engine. That was the GS 1150, and then of course the RT 1150 and the RS 1150, and like the many, many other variations that they stuck this motor in. But this motor like completely changed what BMW was and launched them into the future. It launched them into having like, even though it's an opposed twin, it's still an old design. This motor compared to the one that it replaced, the R100, is, is basically a NASA rocket compared to a paper airplane. It's light years advanced compared to that old motor. And it shows. This thing is smooth as silk, baby. Again, weird. It's weird that th this is the smoothest bike out of all of them, and it's an opposed twin. When I very first met Richard, he was just getting off his R100 and had just bought an RS 1150, which is the same motor that's in this one. Me and him together, I was with him through the entire time when he bought that bike brand new. You know, of course, talking about Richard from the Dirty Shame. He put over 100,000 miles on that motorcycle with zero engine problems. I never had to do one single thing to that bike besides put oil and batteries in it. So this 1150 motor, as I said before, there's a reason that the GS guys all got their rep for just die hard loving their bike more than everything else on the back of this motor. Also very ironic that the 100, the old 1000cc GS, that thing, uh, oh, used one of those will go for like 15 grand. The other models aren't far behind. Whereas you can pick up one of these, gosh, you can really get them pretty affordable. And even though it's refined enough that you might be asking somebody for some gray poupon when you pull up next to them, baby, this 1150, it is still a hood rocket, trust me. It's just a hood rocket with a bow tie. I got this seat so light, it's fine. I'm fine with the seat this low. It's not like super uncomfortable. I would raise it up if I was riding around more, but I will tell you right now, it's really wild that somebody who's four foot 11, Shaylisi, four foot 11, 100 pounds, can just as comfortably ride this motorcycle as me at six foot one, actually, sorry, sorry, five, 12 and a half. It's an important half. We can ride this motorcycle with this pretty much the same amount of ease. She's a little harder time picking it up off the side stand than I do, but she has no problem putting her feet down with this bike. And it's engineered so cleverly to operate in so many different ways. It really is something else. This is a really special motorcycle. And if you've bought a raffle ticket to support Forgotten Angels and their mission to stop the cycle of foster care abuse, if you've donated money to that cause and I happen to pull your name if Karma sticks her finger in your face and says, today's your day, sucker, and you pick the BMW, I will tell you, you have picked the best motorcycle out of all four by a lot. That doesn't mean I don't understand if somebody picks something else. Like, I get it, man. The other motorcycles do something special, that's for sure. But this is far and above the best motorcycle. All right, all right. It's getting dark. But, you know, I got to let myself out to pee when it's not raining. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Let's get back to the garage before we get soaked again. I think that rain's coming back. <sighs> it's about 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I'm feeling silly. I'm feeling real real silly like so silly that i didn't even work on the v65 magnet at all not that i don't want to get it fixed but of course i want to fix it i love that bike but other things are calling me right now sometimes you get a wild hair on your ass sometimes you get an itch and there's only one scratch for it and that's adventure and adventure awaits i got a hankering to make some real bad decisions right now so uh 3 a.m on a thursday why the hell not let's hit the road baby there is a 650 cc v-strom sitting out there that looks like it has a little bit of luggage on it. I'm stealing away in the middle of the night and I'm not even saying goodbye. Well, I guess I am now. Goodbye. Adventure awaits. 
This doesn't exactly sound like the most adventurous bike, but adventure we will. Like all good adventure, starts with a visit to the good old stab and grab. I just wouldn't feel right taking off and having fun if I didn't stop here first. <laughs> we got hellbent for leather playing over the center as we escape the wang. Well, we're just escaping Tampa right now, and I can really get away with hellbent for leather on a V-Strom 650, but baby, I don't care. I don't care if I'm gonna get away with it or not. I might be hellbent for pleather on this thing, but baby, I don't even care. This is my first time on a V-Strom 650, man. Why does this thing like kind of rip, dude? Damn. <laughs> Who knew? I always just thought it was like comparable to a KLR 650. That is not the case, man. This thing is a rocket ship. Well, I don't know about a rocket ship, but compared to a KLR, it's a rocket ship. Under cover of the night, baby. I like slipping away in the middle of the night because it makes me feel like I got away with something. Just makes me feel like I'm cackling down the highway, escaping the middle of the night after stealing a $20 bill of the old lady's purse and eating all little Aiden's fruit snacks on the way out. Sometimes you gotta hit the cooter and escape on the scooter. And uh, I'm not doing that tonight, but that's sure what it feels like. Point of no return, passing Bears Avenue. After this, we're out of here. Escaping the Wang. Onward. Oh, first stop on the V-Strom. I got a powerful hunger for a glizzy baby. Yeah, I'm trying not to eat him as much. I'm trying, I'm trying to eat better. I'm trying to live better, but, but I'll say it ain't a road trip unless you get to stop and have hot dogs, all right? It just ain't a road trip. Some things are sacred. Man, if this old doo-doo, dum-dum, dog shit pilot gas station even has glizzies. Success. Not on the adventure. I mean, no, we're technically on an adventure, but uh, success on the hot dogs. And you know what? We're not really on an adventure. Delicious. Now we're on an adventure. So far, this little V-Strom 650 is really, really impressed me. I got it loaded down, and uh, I ain't exactly a ballerina over here. Got plenty of power. Feels like it wants to do a wheelie when you crack it wide open, and it's comfortable on top of it, man. I'm really, really digging this motorcycle. Let's see how much I dig it after another 500 miles, though. Now that I got a couple hot dogs inside me working their magic, I'm ready for a little more adventure, baby. Let's go. Escape the way. This thing is way quicker than it has any right to be, especially fully loaded with my fat ass on it. This thing freaking gets up and goes ramming speed without even thinking about it, baby. Not bad for a 650. Well, you know, getting through that slog, leaving at three o'clock in the morning sure is tough. Going up the shaft of the wing. It's uh, something I've done quite a few times before and it's never very exciting. That's why I'd rather just get it over with in the middle of the night. Plus coming up here to the border of the Wang, about to burst free. We're doing it right as the sun is rising and I'm born again, I'm revitalized. And that sun's coming up, that black sky is turning purple and blue. Baby, I'm born again and it feels so good. <laughs> Hurtling down this highway, away from a broken heart, on our way to a heart we gotta break. We're bursting free from the wang, and we're the rest of the country's problem now. Feels good, daddy. Feels real good. If you've never taken a long motorcycle trip, I'll tell you, you feel an entire gamut of emotions. I've wanted to go back home and go to bed. I've wanted to get off this motorcycle. I've also wanted to never get off this motorcycle and keep going forever. Like, all of those feelings within like the first hour. I really like that. And we spill forth unto the peach. There's about six Waffle House waitresses behind that dumpster over there. And I believe uh, anything above six Waffle House waitresses gathered in one place is known as a uh, Congress of Waffle House waitresses. And boy, they're smoking reefer and talking crap and laughing about somebody. And I'll tell you this right now, boys, you do not want to be the subject of conversation as a full grown man of six Waffle House waitresses high on pot behind the dumpster. So whatever poor sucker they happen to be talking about over there, chief, it's time to do better. Or best be moseying on before I go over there asking for a puff and start getting involved in something that ain't none of my business. It just seems awful interesting over there, that's all I'm saying.
say goodbye to the peace and hello to South Carolina, baby. Making moves. Which also just means I can speed a little easier now because let me tell you what. If you want to fuck around and find out, speed in Georgia. Personally, I don't fuck around in Georgia and I don't recommend that you do either. <laughs> Freaking highway patrol out there taking donations for the police athletic league all day long. I think it's just absolutely wild. At least on I-95, it's so wild the difference between South Carolina and Georgia. The minute you cross the border, you feel like you're in a different country. They're obviously pretty close. They're, they, they have a border together, so it's the same land. But Georgia, like all the trees are always pushed all the way back. And there's a billboard like every 15 feet. I mean, it's just like a line of billboards down the side of the road. It's horrendously ugly, if you ask me. I don't know if there's just not enough places to advertise in South Carolina or if South Carolina was like, oh, that shit in Georgia it looks really dumb. We're not gonna do that on the side of our roads. We're gonna keep it pretty. I don't know which one's the answer because like there's a billboard right there. They have billboards here, but but not, not like Georgia, man. Georgia goes ham with the billboards. Uh-oh, <laughs> that doesn't look good. Is that clearing up or is that staying there? Uh, I think it's time for the rain gear. I want to borrow the commercial vehicle only parking just for a minute to put on my rain gear. Put away my GoPro. We're about to run right into it. And all of a sudden, I uh, realized that how I packed my rain gear away was uh, very optimistic. This is going to take a little bit of digging. Check back in when it's safe to put the GoPro back on. I bet you guys are wondering where I was headed. Escaping the Wang, where could I possibly be going? Of course, to check out this Royal Enfield Himalayan. Why wouldn't I be checking that out? It belongs to the one and only long, tall, and deadly Blissful Ellie. You stand right there. I'm gonna come so everyone, right now we look like, you look pretty normal, yeah. right? But I'm just going to, without without stopping, uh, if you guys don't know Ellie, and uh, just for, <laughs> just for, just for comparison's sake, I am actually 5'12 and a half. You're literally wearing shoes right now. I, I have shoes barefoot. and you're barefoot. No, you can can't show the tootsies though, no free feet. Yeah, I'll blur it out, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is when I when I talk to Ellie, this is how I do it. Uh, so Ellie's got herself a Himalayan. She bought it, she did the motorcycle course, she got herself a Himalayan and she's learning how to ride. I said, come on, man, What's, uh, let's go hook it up, let's have some fun. Let's go riding the first time. You've been riding on the back plenty, but it's time for you to ride on your own bike. We'd have a good time doing that, but it's gonna be in a different video, so make sure you subscribe to the one and only long, tall and deadly, blissful Ellie, and we're gonna make some uh, super cool content. Exciting stuff. New riders. I love it. Till next time, y'all. Keep it here. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Panic spreading far and wide Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.